In 2012, the Pax River F-35 ITF persevered and stayed ahead of the official test plan. Because of the hard work and dedication of everyone on the team, the F-35 BNC models continue to make history and go where they have never been before. On January 20th, the ITF had a special guest who brought some amazing news. The Stovall variant has made, I believe, and all of us believe, sufficient progress so that as of today, I am lifting the Stovall probation. Instead of taking the hand off the throttle after this news, the team continued to press. On BF1 this year, we've been uh, doing high speed mode 4 testing, also been carrying internal stores, uh, Ford CGs, and we also achieved all our test points for the year. Uh, we've done that in quite early on. We managed to get um, hit a target by mid June. Um, quite an achievement for the kind of testing we do. It means we have to do a lot of hours uh, in the seats, multiple sorties, up to six, seven sorties in a day. Uh, one line of testing this year was mode one doors, stay in mode one. Uh, open up all the Stovall doors into all the different positions, different combinations, put a lot of buffet on the aircraft. This is actually a failure case that the service should never see, um, but we have to go there just to prove that it's safe for them. But we're seeing good performance there, the aircraft's handling quite well. It's, there's no deficit to performance or the handling characteristics. As BF-1 continued to progress through its test plan, BF-2 was making history as well with the first ever flights with external stores. For most of this year, BF2 has been flying with external stores. We've completed a lot of flutter and flying qualities work with the A9X, edge ground pylons, and also with the gun pod loaded to the center of the jet. Generally, we've seen very good performance with the external stores loaded to the aircraft. This has been great to allow other aircraft to go and do other work with similar configurations. Completing the flying qualities and flutter work with the A9X loaded to the aircraft has allowed BF3 to go out and complete its first weapon separation of the year. Conditions for the first release uh, were designed so that we could get it done inshore, and that was just part of the risk mitigation strategy to, to do it fairly close to home. So that put us at about 4,500 feet, 0.7 Mach. Uh, I was in the control room for the flight. I was looking at the Mach, the altitude, and other essential parameters to make sure that whenever the pilot actually pushed the pickle button, we were where we needed to be. On the day of the event, echo control vectored the aircraft and the pilots onto the hazard pattern. Well, once you have the clearance to drop, the pilot does the countdown. The last few seconds are silent, so that if there's anything wrong, anybody in the room can make the call to go ahead and stop. The flight and the test itself was a success. We can move forward to the next separation events on the program. CF-1 and CF-2 perform the first ever sea model formation flight, which is an important part of getting this jet ready for the fleet. It was a good flight. Um, we already knew that the airplane handled well. We confirmed that with flying an aircraft carrier recovery sort of profile, uh, in addition to a couple other um, sort of standard formation tasks. Navy and Marine pilots who fly this airplane are really going to like the formation handling qualities. It's very pleasant, very easy to fly in formation. Then this summer, CF-2 became a predator of the night and flew the sea model's first ever night mission. CF-2 performed the taxi landing light evaluation flight test. We did a lot of learning. We recognize that a lot of the mission of the airplane will be at night once the airplane is fielded, and so uh, we think that's an important part of testing, and we're anxious to get going with more of it. The objective was to evaluate its effectiveness and evident aircraft obstruction. It was a successful test. The pilot gave us very good feedback, gave us a lot of ratings for the various data that we were looking for. BF2 continued its exciting testing that took the jet and team out to Edwards Air Force Base to conduct air start testing. Uh, we basically took it out to Edwards for uh, risk reduction. They've got the dry lake beds out there surrounding the air base and we can use them in emergencies if we couldn't get the engine started for any reason. When we came up to the actual testing itself, we made sure we had um, all the subsystems pre-positioned so we were getting the power we needed to keep the aircraft flying whilst the engine was off. When we were happy with all that, we basically switched the engine switch to off, waited for the RPM to decay, down to the values we were looking for and then switched the engine back on. Um, waited for the, the uh, thrust to come back up again and then we knew we had a good test point. Overall on the testing we actually got 
Um, the 27 test points that we went out there to do, we got them all done in within six flights. The best we got was eight air starts during one flight. While one team was on the west coast, we had another team on the Jersey Shore at Lakehurst. While CF3 continued its important testing that will lead to the F-35C being deployed from a carrier. CF3 this uh, past year we got quite a bit done, spent a lot of time up at Lakehurst this year. Uh, with some changes to our tail hook design to continue a battery of ground roll and test work. We spent uh, quite a bit of time working on both uh, E-28 and Mark 7, doing roll-ins, uh, building up flying arrestments. We did a number of flying arrestments which were the first for the F-35C variant and that provided a, a lot of great data for the broader team uh, to take to the drawing boards to validate the final design of the hill. It was a pretty beautiful sight seeing that first trap. Throughout 2012, the Pax River F-35 ITF has continued to excel and complete testing that has exceeded everyone's expectations. The ITF has been a part of testing 11 different F-35s, which has amounted to over 7,000 test points. The future of the fighter jet is becoming a reality at the Pax River F-35 ITF as testing continues in order to get this jet ready to protect the skies for decades to come.